Many of you have probably heard the news about the Euphrates River drying up. And several people have asked me to discuss this. Now, first of all, well, let's take a look at this. Iraq is suffering one of the worst droughts in decades. While this is bad news for farmers, it is good news for archaeologists in the country. The receding waters of the Euphrates River have revealed ancient archaeological sites, some of which were unknown until now. Ancient buildings have emerged from the riverbed in Iraq's western Anbar province as the Euphrates River dries up. For the first time, archaeologists are able to access sites that had been flooded by Saddam Hussein in the mid-1980s. So first of all, folks, the Euphrates River is always drying up. Don't believe me? This article is from 2009. There was a four-year drought that started back in 2006. In 2014, Turkey completely cut off the flow of the river into Syria and Iraq. And they've been having problems with drought and this river drying up ever since. Not to mention the constant conflicts with control of the water flow. So let's take a closer look at this and see where we are at in the timeline of the end days of biblical prophecy. From the looks of things, the end days seem to be upon us. But I do believe some things do have to happen, at least before the sixth vial or bold judgments of Revelation. So how should we view biblical prophecy? Should we give up and just ignore the signs? Do we just prepare and trust in the Father? Or do we keep looking for the end? Euphrates at risk of drying up. Imad Ubed, from the administration board of the Euphrates Dam near Haseki, underlined that the water level in the reservoir has fallen dramatically. If Turkey continues to block the water supply, irrigation and electricity supply will collapse. Now, Turkey agreed back in 1987 to have a certain amount of water flowing through the dam, and they cut that in half from around 500 cubic meters per second down to around 200 cubic meters per second. According to this article, Turkey has been doing this for the past two years. And of course, it happened before in 2014. Something tells me that the Euphrates River has been having this problem for a long time. And it has had something similar happen back in the 70s. Did it happen in the 80s? Yes, Saddam Hussein dammed the river, causing 120 miles worth of flooding. That river has been dried up, flooded, dammed, blocked, drained, polluted, diverted. It's got fallen angels buried underneath. What do you expect it to do, folks? In Revelation 16, 12, it reads, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Wait a minute. What happened to the fifth angel, the fourth and third, second and first angels? What about the seven trumpets and the seals? So this is what we do now. We just skip ahead, just apply prophecy when it shows up out of order, just a random vial poured out at a random time, right? I mean, is there a right or wrong way to interpret prophecy? The book of Revelation, the way it reads, there does seem to be a progression there as a series of events instead of just random things happening, right? For example, the four angels are loosed at the Euphrates during the sounding of the trumpets, and then 
the Euphrates dries up during the vile judgments. But I've heard people say the Euphrates dries up and then the four angels are released. Or are we to look at the seals, trumpets, and vials as one? Now, here's the thing. If things continue as they have been, it is predicted that the Euphrates River could dry up completely by 2040. And something tells me they just made that number up. Now, the spirit of the Euphrates is the spirit of Babylon. Back then, Cyrus of Persia had diverted the river so that the invading army could pass over. Now, the river is controlled to starve people into submission. So you can look around you and you can go into the book of Revelation and pick out certain prophecies that some people might say have been fulfilled. And I say, let's not forget the mountain-sized meteors that are supposed to hit the earth, the scorching heat, the giant hailstones, the great earthquakes, and the opening of the abyss. The Euphrates River has always been a problem for anyone living around it. Remember, Revelation takes history from the Old Testament and plugs it in to give a prophecy in the form of a reference to what happened in the past. That's why when you read through it, it sounds like the prophet is talking about Babylon or things that happened during the plagues of Egypt, you see. Almost all the plagues of Egypt are prophesied to happen again to some degree in Revelation. Here is the bottom line, folks, and this is the true purpose of this presentation. I think people should stop worrying about when the end will come. Stop waiting for the Lord to come. Stop looking at everything as a fulfillment of biblical prophecy and live your life knowing that any day could be your own personal tribulation. And you may not even be around to even see most of the really bad things unfold. This is dangerous, and this is what Jesus warned everyone about. He said, no one knows the hour of the day, no man, not the angels, only the Father. And if people keep trying to watch for the coming of the Lord, they will eventually get tired of watching and waiting, and then they will give up and start partying thinking that the Lord will probably never come. And that's when things will happen. You see, that is the number one prophecy right there. When people start to believe that the Lord is not coming, then you will see everything unfold. You are supposed to be living your life not waiting for the end. This is what Jesus said. You have to just keep living your life properly and just trust that the Lord is coming not anxiously awaiting him. That means you lack trust in him. Do you see? And you spend all your time preparing, looking for signs, instead of just serving the Lord right now and living your best life as he intended. So that way, when the time does arrive, you will be resolved and you will not be perplexed. You won't have to worry because you know that he has got your back. The day of the Lord is coming. Stop waiting for it to come. People really need to fix what is going on in their personal lives before they can start trying to decode biblical prophecy. I have to say, I don't look forward to a third of the population being killed. Of all the problems people may cause me, I don't like seeing people die. You know, when it comes to things like this in biblical prophecy, people really have to relax. I mean, every year it's the same thing. Oh, it's doomsday coming in April. It's coming in November. It's coming in December every year. And that is why I say this is dangerous. Because as long as people keep saying that the end is here, other people focus on it and get desensitized to the point to where they no longer care if the Lord is coming or not. And at that moment, they fall back to sleep. That will be the coming of the Lord. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler 
over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, interestingly enough, since the Euphrates has been drying up over the years, they have been discovering ancient ruins. Now, some people who have been in the area, who have been in the underground irrigation tunnels, have reported hearing strange sounds and voices. Now, if there are four angels bound at the Euphrates, then you can bet there are also a bunch of entities surrounding that place as well. But here is another question. Some scriptures, such as angels being bound, many people take quite literally. But some other things that don't make sense, we say, oh, that has a symbolic meaning, or the author is speaking figuratively. So how do we determine what is meant to be symbolic and what is meant to be taken literally? And maybe that is what people are truly trying to differentiate. So when we do see something that seems like biblical prophecy being fulfilled, we can have a better understanding of what was written. That's all for now, folks. There is more to come. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. And until next time, friends, as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.